101.3 FM, KRNG Fallon, Reno, Fernley, Sparks, Nevada, and surrounding. Hit music and more, this is Biggest Little Radio. 101.3 FM, KRNG Fallon, Reno, Fernley, Sparks, Nevada, and surrounding. 101.3 Biggest Little Radio presents Jan Small Business Spotlight with Jan Friends. Once again, welcome back. You are listening to Jan's Small Business Spotlight. I'm Jan from the Friendly News Network. Find us online at FriendlyNews.com for all your breaking news and weather. To find local businesses and services, check out our business directory at FriendlyBusinessDirectory.com. If you've got a business, you need to be there. Call us with questions for our guests anytime through our live broadcast by calling 775-404-1115. Text us at 775-737-2344 or use the chat box at BiggestLittleRadio.com. Today, my guest is Cal Elrich. Cal is a real estate developer who has lived in Fernley for more than 20 years with his wife, Dinah. They have two grown children and five grandchildren. Cal served two full terms in office at the city council for being uh he was appointed to the council to fill a vacancy in march 2008 he's a sworn special deputy sheriff and a firearms instructor cal is also president of the cowboy fast draw association which has over 5,000 members now uh the uh 45 colt is the only caliber allowed in the uh, cowboy fast draw the cfda has about uh, 70 affiliated clubs across northern america and several countries. You can check out that website at cowboyfastdraw.com. Cal is also one of the founding members of the Fernley Builders Association. Fernley Builders Association was started by six contractors in the Fernley area to work hand in hand with Lyon County in 1996. Since Fernley became corporate city, FBA now works with Lyon County and the city of Fernley to assist with laws that will affect the construction industry, subcontractors, commercial and industrial businesses, and the overall population of our area. Today we'll be discussing growth in Fernley and how it affects businesses and residents. Welcome to the show, Cal. Hey, Jan. Thanks for having me in. Glad to have you here. Um, it seems <coughs> like uh, we've, uh, we've passed the ugly part of the uh, economic downturn. Hopefully, right? <laughs> Ugly. I'm telling you, this Fernley got thrashed in this latest economic downturn. In fact, we went from the fastest growing city in America per capita in the first quarter of 2006 to being featured as the hardest hit community on national television by NBC, I think, in about 2009 or 10 because mm -hmm. the housing market just crashed so terribly here. Right. So let's let's go back and look at the growth that Fernley experienced between I think it was 1997 to 2007. There were like two or three separate little growth spurts that just kept expanding, right? Well, yeah. When I, when I moved here in 1993, there was like 4,300 people living here, and uh, then as things caught on and everything uh, back in the late 90s, it really started accelerating around here. Mm -hmm. I started production building in 1994. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I'm the longest standing production semi custom builder left in Fernley, but I've seen a lot of trends here. But it really took off because everybody, Fernley was a well kept secret for many years, and then it just started expanding because irregardless of the fact that we're a little community 30 miles from Reno, we're still close enough to go into Reno and run errands in. It's, it's, we're like a little suburb of. of of Reno, we could be a self-sufficient community, but we need to grow probably almost double our size to get there to have all the shopping we need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when when the city was was first, it, it was it was like everybody was scared of the growth. It it was really hard because it was so fast. <clears throat> well, no one likes to see change. You know, I I love to drive down Farm District Road where I still currently live and see the old hundred-year-old cottonwood trees, and mm -hmm. I for one hate to see that stuff go away i i kind of before the city was even in, incorporated i kind of tried to lead the charge on a kind of a green belt along farm district road mm -hmm. uh which is still part of the city of fernley uh you know development plans and uh 
And I'd like to see that expanded upon because we got to keep a little bit of the country atmosphere here in Fernley. Oh yeah, we definitely, definitely do. So how did, when, when we hit that, that, um, that crash, uh, big speed bump, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, how, how did it, how did it affect Fernley? I know there was a lot of different aspects to it, you know, between homes and businesses and, and then to add insult to injury, we had the flood right after that. So that exasperated the situation on top of it. So it did. how how do you see that all besides a bad domino effect? <laughs> well, yes, it was bad. In fact, it 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 cast a gray hume over Fernley's real estate values that's just now starting to get righted. And uh I mean, yes, first the economy crashed. Uh really starting in 2006, we started noticing it. We mm -hmm. real by 2007 we knew it was going to get bad. We didn't know how bad and for how long. Mm -hmm. And uh, it ended up lasting almost a decade. And uh, the, yes, the, the, the flood in 2008 exasperated the, 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 the situation. And through further darker cast over the property values here in Fernley, mm -hmm. about 2009 or 10, the assessor actually cut in half the value of most properties in Fernley. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so for years, builders would try, you know, the realtors say, we need more housing. When things started coming back four or five years ago, a little mm -hmm. bit, they say, we need more houses built. And we and what was happening was the existing homes were, were holding the appraisals down to where a builder would be committing financial suicide to actually build a house for sale because mm -hmm. it would be judged by houses that are much older and got devalued. Mm -hmm. And so now, I see the market emerging. New ho new homes always set the market, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the mind of the appraisers. The existing homes will follow up the new homes. And we're in that reversal right now to where uh, a lot of buyers would rather prefer to, to buy a, a, a existing home because it's got mature landscaping and a lot of things, you know, maybe the owner added a lot of nice extras to the home that they would like. Mm -hmm. But it's still the new homes that have to set the value going forward. Okay. Now, when you have, now the last time we had the boom, what happened was there were, were a lot of uh, homes built. And the businesses, it, business was really slow to come up. And this time it's a, you know, right now it looks like the businesses are, are getting a hold and they're starting to go. We've got Tesla, we've got the new road that goes into Silver Springs, we've got um, the other, uh, the old Amazon building is, is getting uh, ready for, I forgot who it was that was going in there. Um, and it looks like that's kind of the staple, you know, that, that holds the community together, is people working. Everything changed. So the businesses yes. are on top now and the property is starting to follow instead of the other way around. The, the, the way it happens <clears throat> is first you need jobs in the community. Mm -hmm. Although back when we were growing, having the big growing spurt, you know, 2000 and really 2003 to 2005 or six was our fastest growing period. People were moving here just because they liked Fernley and it didn't have all the jobs that are about to hit us now. And, but people were moving to Fernley because still, if you really add it up, if you want to go to a hospital in Reno, it's just a short drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably as close to the North Valleys in, in, in North of Sparks is how long it takes you or to get to a wise, hospital yeah. from Fernley and right. time-wise. So really, uh, and so the amenities are 30 miles away, short drive. But what we're seeing now is when Tesla announced in October a few years ago that they chose the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center as their location over five other states, that changed everything. Because it was coming back slowly here and there, but not enough to, to really cause a reemergence. When they announced, there's all sorts of ancillary companies that are coming with them, including that one that's now getting ready to occupy the old Amazon building. Mm -hmm. They're here because of Tesla. Mm -hmm. And there's and that's a lot here of, in town, which is yes, great. 300 good paying jobs I hear is coming. So, but there's because Tesla's coming, there's all kinds of companies and this caught the attention of CEOs all over America go, what are we missing in Nevada? And now a whole bunch of companies are coming here and there, there's 50,000 jobs coming on our doorstep. And while we got to be still cautious, 
uh, Reno's taken off. Housing values have gone up so fast in Reno and they're out of inventory. And uh, so we need diversified housing here. We need affordable homes. We need, you know, th that are kind of entry level. We need little upper, you know, mid mid level homes, higher level homes. We need, we need the whole gamut of, quali uh, uh, gamut of quality homes here in our community to support what's coming uh, right on our doorstep in the way of jobs. Mm -hmm. So maybe Fernley won't be uh, dubbed as bedroom community anymore. We'll have our own. We'll, we'll just kind of come of age and have our own industry because we we do have the uh, the park over here that mm -hmm. is not full. Mm -hmm. There is room for more businesses to come in and utilize that park, right? Well, there there certainly is. That's a huge park. That's five thousand acres over there. But right now, Tahoe Reno, Reno Industrial Center has been less expensive mm -hmm. for people to buy and get going in and stuff. So. Uh, but you know the the way development here uh, that's going to start taking off you know too along with that it'll all work together because there's other projects planned for here that that you know like a a huge rail center coming in here in the future maybe on the county line uh, there's all kinds of jobs coming here so Fernley is going to become a very fast growing city again to a point mm -hmm. and we grew to twenty thousand. But we were kind of caught in a tweener of being, you know, it was nice when Walmart moved here. It was the first place you could actually buy a pair of underwear in oh, Burnley, yeah, you know, yeah. and that wonderful <laughs> for a change. But we're going to see more. The way it works is first jobs with industrial and everything, mm -hmm. then rooftops, then retail. That's the wave of development, not the other way around. Yeah, People, we were kind of backwards the last time. Right. Yeah. And there were companies that came in here and bought, built retail, and some of them survived, some of them did not through the bad economy. But now, uh, I think we're going to see Fernley grow to thirty thousand, up from twenty thousand within the next five years, and then we're going to see more stuff where it becomes more of a self-sufficient community. I don't know if I ever wanted to get as 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 populated as reno sparks area because frankly every time i i pass vista boulevard on the way back home to fernley i breathe a sigh of relief man i'm out of the big traffic jam and i can <laughs> yeah. relax finally on the interstate and mm -hmm. i'm anxious to get back to fernley mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah and that you know it's it's a lot cheaper out here too uh, it's always been but i think now it's becoming more noticeable well i tell you what, the economy is starting to catch again you, you're right on that one jan Think of this, we, the Fernley Builders Association and some of the developers that were building here in the late 90s and early 2000s coined this phase, drive a little, save a lot. Now I hear car dealerships using that same slogan, yeah. but now we need to change our slogan. It's drive a little, save a heck of a lot because a qu good quality home here that sells for about $160 a square foot, you know, so like, a, t a 2400 square foot home that would sell for in the mid threes would sell for the mid fives and almost six hundred thousand dollars in reno there is too big of a of a it's you know a used to be about a, yeah there used to be about a thousand dollars a mile you know for you know basically thirty thousand dollars difference between reno sparks oh, and I see. Uh -huh. you see that yeah yeah now it's about seven or eight thousand dollars a mile yikes that gap has got to close a little bit mm-hmm mm-hmm <clears throat> Wow. So, um, will there, do you, do you see other areas? I mean, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of stuck the way we're laid out. I mean, we've got housing, we've got industrial and, you know, uh, close to us and far away. Um, any, anything else that will affect us as far as growth? Uh, you, you said, you know, the industrial and the rooftops come second and then the Mm -hmm. and then small business yes. to create to create a community that's self-sufficient now i know back east there was one town i don't remember what it was that when the crash hit they were barely affected it didn't it didn't bother them a bit because mm -hmm. they had everything in place what do we need to do to get everything in place so if and when we if something happens like that we we don't we don't fall as much as as we did before we need to have a self-sufficient community. We need to have our own uh, job base, our own uh, in retail, and the rooftops follow, you know, lead the retail. But 
the the major portion they're estimating 50,000 jobs to hit the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center in the next five years. That's is a lot. What, is what they're figuring. So right there is our job base. Whether right. the, our industrial develops infernally itself, and it will. Mm -hmm. Okay, but just having Tahoe Reno Industrial Center oh, yeah. on our doorstep is oh, yeah. the job so i believe fernley's future is very bright as far as becoming a self-sufficient community great. Yes. Oop, well hey guys we need to take a break right now and uh, we'll be right back after a few words from our sponsor liberty fitness follow the conversation on our chat box at www.biggestlittleradio.com Strength through discipline is our motto, and we can help you live by it. We are Liberty Fitness, and we offer a variety of classes for adults and youth to help you reach your goals. Contact us at 980-8096 or visit us at 888-Highway 95A for more information. 101.3 FM, KRNG, Fallon, Reno, Fernley, Sparks, Nevada, and surrounding. 101.3 Biggest Little Radio presents Jan Small Business Spotlight with Jan Friends. Well, welcome back. Part two. <laughs> We're talking to Cal Elrich. Um, hey, if you've got any questions for Cal, uh, give us a call here at 775-404-1115. Uh, Send us a text over at 775-737-2344 or use the chat box at biggestlittleradio.com. Um, Cal, um, I wanted to touch on the Builders Association. What What is that? Now, we, it got started in 96, correct? Yes. Okay, and it's been going ever since. Mm -hmm. So give us a an idea of why it was put together, how it works, what do you do, all that good stuff. <laughs> it, it was first put together when the county commissioners made a decision that affected the builders, and, you know, and building in the community. And so uh, we, we went that, you know, we got together, we had a meeting at the Wigwam, where, where we still meet, by the way, the first Wednesday of every month uh, at 7:30 in the morning, we have a breakfast meeting. Uh, all the contractors and realtors and people in the in the industry are invited. <clears throat> but we went down and we we uh, uh, as a group talked to the county commissioners uh, at a meeting, and uh, they agreed with us. They 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 saw it our way. They understood our concerns, and they changed the ordinance that they made because of that. So uh, here in Fernley, we were very unique in the sense that. We often have the mayor, our building official, sometimes the city manager and everything at our Builders Association meetings here. So they do listen to the building community mm -hmm. uh, to solve any you know issues we have. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice relationship we have with the city of Fernley. So that kind of solidifies everything of what you're, th what you're thinking and the ideas you're coming up with and the city. So everybody's kind of on the same page, right? Well, you know, the city and the building industry are kind of partners on building a quality community. Mm -hmm. That's the way I've always looked at it. We should not be adversarial. Of course, the city has codes. Mm -hmm. They've adopted building codes, you know, to, to, to enhance not only public safety, of course, is number one, but add to property values because it's well-built construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, 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 the good builders are all in on that same thing. They want to put out a good product. Mm -hmm. So that's a, And so we still meet, we, we discuss things. Lately, it's about how to get the, the, remove the stigma from the city of Fernley, you know, and, and home buyers and get them interested in our community again. And, uh, you know, from Reno area and the realtors in Reno to say, hey, you know, let's go look in Fernley. Mm -hmm. And uh, because there, there is a cloud hanging over our community a little bit still, and we need to erase that because Fernley truly is the real Nevada. We have all kinds of things happening here. Uh, we're between, you know, Lake Lahontan, Pyramid Lake. We got a racetrack here. We got a motocross track. We got, you know, we got so many things here for families to do. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of outdoor activities where, uh, as you go to Reno, it's all inside or it's casinos or it's adult things. That's right. And here you've got more family oriented things going. Exactly. And so we need to sell our community as a great place to live, work, and play, like the city motto is. Mm -hmm. and, and it truly is. Yeah, and it's, it's um, well, I grew up in Reno, and I had, you know, you've got the mountains surrounding you, but you're kind of in a bowl. And from years past, I used to go through Fernley to Fallon to Sand Mountain. 
Mm -hmm. to go ride the buggy. Yeah. And I always liked Fernley because it was kind of like a mini mini version. You know, you've got you've got the mountains that are around and some people look at them and say they look like little hills, but they're not hills. I mean, you've got to think Fernley is 4200 feet and these hills are up at 7000 feet, so they're not really hills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just right. has that funny little illusion mm -hmm. going. Yes. But uh it's um it's wide open space. And mm -hmm. the sky is limitless. That's why I've always liked it here. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a sense of freedom out here, and and quite frankly, uh, the weather's nicer out here. It'll be windy knocking trucks over uh, on 580 between Reno and Carson. Oh and yeah, it's windy in Reno and Carson and everything. And mm -hmm. out here, you wouldn't even know it. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we get our weather too. But yeah. but generally speaking, uh -huh. uh, the climate's a little nicer in Fernley. Yeah. Well, when I follow follow the weather a lot, um, I notice that you can look at the radar and you see the clouds come in and they're kind of bouncing off the the, the mountains like ping pong ball. And it'll most of the time it'll go up towards Pyramid. You know, it'll hit that one mountain and go towards Pyramid and then just leave us alone. Yes. It, it goes around us a lot of times. It does. It'll go down to Carson Valley or across Pyramid, yeah. it seems. You know, and <laughs> us. that's kind of cool. But Really? Really? But, uh, but no, we want to remove. Uh, in fact, I'm trying to organize the active developers right now that mm -hmm. are building production housing in Fernley mm -hmm. into an advertising campaign. And we're going to flood Reno with it here in the coming months. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and uh, you know, and it's just really, uh, we got to drive home the fact that that there's a great value here in Fernley. There is, there is. It's it's kind of hard for people to realize everything we have and the value. I think that's going to be paramount. Oh, it is. As uh, as as time goes on, because there is already a big gap going. Yes. Now, what about new developers? I mean, you you uh, you you talk to them, invite them over, and discuss things they're always invited but everyone's really just getting started yeah. there's a lot of sticks in the air right now uh -huh. there's some of them are making sales mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's uh it's good to see and they're mainly mainly on existing lots that mm -hmm. were created back you know 10 you know years ago or more mm -hmm. and now they're starting to build on it again because it's not financial suicide they're now able just to build them and make some profit right a and if there's no profit to be made, then why would a builder ever build a home? Because there's so much, yeah, it's a lot of work and, and liability to build. So mm -hmm. uh, there, has, there has to be, everyone needs to make a living building that. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Have they, have they um, uh, changed the ordinances that before, I mean, it was such a crazy rush to build things and, and everything. A lot of the streets that should have been connected weren't. You know, and then we hit the crash, and they, you know, the the builders or they they went broke or or whatever, and they weren't finished. Has anything been um, done uh, with that as far as uh, you need to lay the streets first and connect them, and then build the houses, or has any ordinance changed to that effect? To, no, not to really. Take care of that. It's all of a mapping process. You I know, see. first there's a tentative map. Yeah. And that's where all the discoveries are made, and and. You know, and somebody buys the property and mm -hmm. it becomes entitled at the tentative map process. And that's where all the connecting streets are shown and usually you phase it and everything. Mm -hmm. And then you usually just have to develop one phase at a time because, let's face it, uh, you know, there, there's a de development over uh, across the street from the school right now. Mm -hmm. And for that development to even start... $18 million has to be spent before the first uh, front door is installed on wow. the house. And so to, to require that everything be done mm -hmm. infrastructure-wise yeah. before the first house is built, yeah. and in that case it does just because there's, a, there's water tanks that have to be put in and mm -hmm. all sorts of things that have to happen. That one is extremely expensive to get started. But to require a subdivision to be completely built all in one phase uh -huh. would is is probably not possible. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, by you know, people just. I just feel sorry for fighter fighters and stuff. You know that, you know that they're they're like in one subdivision that doesn't have really a connector street. They got a big block across, and then there's something that happens. You know, within a mm -hmm. quarter of a mile, and they've got to go all the way around. It's like whoa. <laughs> there, there was actually an issue uh, that that at the time Councilman Parsons and I dealt with uh, on a subdivision. I won't name it right now, but it was in it was not completed. Uh -huh. You know, they built the first phase, but not the the, the consecutive phases. And 
but, but they came in to, re, you know, to renew their tentative map and we required them to put in an emergency gate and a temporary road just mm -hmm. for fire uh, fighting reasons. So, yeah. uh, so things, sometimes things will be caught like that if the economy turns, but we can't judge we can't really can't judge everything around it's a bad economy see what isn't what isn't there or what's coming yeah fernley's had recessions before mm -hmm. but nothing yeah, and, and the country's had recessions before nevada's kind of been recession proof in the northern part until this last one mm -hmm. where we are so hard to hit so we can't base everything on a doomsday scenario all right. the time we got to look forward and make it achievable for people to do and when the economy comes back mm -hmm. guess what it's all going to get infilled now. It's going to get done. And if anybody knows, you know, the, the people in Fernley, they have that can-do attitude. Because when something happens, they don't cry about it. They all just kind of jump in and help to get things fixed. It's amazing here. They, they do. And it's just like when we had the flood. Mm -hmm. We had... We had uh, not only we had people with their own boats. Yeah, come in helping yeah. people. We had contractors pulling in heavy equipment to help people. Uh -huh. I gave the use of a, of an empty building I had for people to store things when they were rebuilding. You know, a it's a community spirit. People just got to chip in and help. Mm -hmm. And they do here, which is it's absolutely amazing. Because That's why we so many call places. it friendly Fernley. Yes, and it needs to it needs to regain that more and stay that way. It does. It does. Um, let's switch for a couple of minutes at the sure. few minutes that we have left and tell us about this quick draw competition because it's um i i actually have a video from years back when you did a uh, uh a little thing at the senior pro rodeo yes and showed everybody and you know i was amazed because you know guys i was i was watching this guy and he pulls his gun and two balloons blow out and it's like i don't know if i heard that second round or not but <laughs> You're fast. They call you Quick Cal. Yes, they do. Your wife's involved. They call her a lot of lead, which yes. I think is extremely funny. Um, but tell us about the uh, the association. It's grown. It's in different countries. It's it's absolutely amazing. Well, it is. My lifelong passion. I started competitive shooting when I was 15 years old, brought into it by my father in the sport of fast draw. And uh, I'm honored. Uh, I won my first world championship at age 19. And I've won 17 of those in my career, in my fast rock career. I've also been a national champion at cowboy action shooting. And I was on the United States pistol team uh, for practical pistol shooting in 1990 and won a gold medal in Adelaide, Australia. So uh, shooting is, is my passion in my life, you know, other than my family. Mm -hmm. and, and I meet the greatest people in the shooting sports. It's wonderful. But the Cowboy Fast Draw Association is an organization that was founded in Deadwood, South Dakota in 2002. And it was a reformation of a sport that was started in the 1950s called Fast Draw. Mm -hmm. Now we call it Cowboy Fast Draw. So the equipment we use, the guns and the holsters, have to be reproductions of things that were actually available in the Old West. Instead of all the modern technology that invaded the sport when they were all cared about speed, mm -hmm. we actually put the Old West back into it. We shoot wax bullet ammunition out of single action revolvers. We react to a light draw fire, and if our bullet hits that target, it's not an easy target to hit either. Then you get your time recorded to the thousands of a second, and, uh, and you, everybody, it's an elimination format. If you beat your opponent three out of five times, but mm -hmm. firearms are never pointed at one another, and one of the founding principles of our organi organization is to have the opportunity to educate as many people po as possible in the safe and proper use of firearms. That's what we're really all about. And we start kids out in our program starting at eight years old, and the first they thing they learn is gun safety. And uh, so I think that's missing in our society. And people need to find them in shooting sports and get involved mm -hmm. if they really want to truly learn how to safely handle a firearm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's my passion. And yes, the organization has grown and it's my passion business. And hopefully soon to be here within a few years, my only business, because uh, I am being called all over the country constantly to travel, uh, to visit clubs and our championship tournaments, of which we have 25 title championships this year from Florida, Virginia, all the way through the country, all the way through the West Coast. I could be technically gone somewhere every weekend. So you're on the road a lot. I am. Or you're, and, you're, and you're probably going to be on the road more. Yes, <laughs> I do. 
yeah yeah so it's that's uh even if even if parents um you know uh we need to do like two things like in 20 seconds here if we can um that the gun safety even if parents maybe not believe in it or don't own a gun it's good to teach the kids about it even if you don't own a gun because then they will know all all young youngsters should be taught basic firearm safety i worry about not you know not so much my kids and grandchildren who i talk gun safety to but friends that may come over to the Mm -hmm. house and our society seems to just want to stick their head in the sand and pretend firearms didn't exist and that's not a realistic approach to it no 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 it's not well you know we're going to have to have you come back and stop talk strictly on gun safety and and what you do in that because i think that's gonna that's gonna fill a whole show right there so um i want to thank everybody for joining me today on uh, jan small business spotlight i'm jan owner of friendly news network find it all in one place breaking news weather plus instant weather in road conditions our main website is fernleynews.com you can also find us at fernley news on twitter and fernley news network on facebook um we've got some funny stuff there too so just you know come on over and take a look if you'd like to be a guest on this program or sponsor the segment, email me at radio at friendlynews.com or call 775-835-3582. Thanks again to my guest, Cal Eldridge, and to our sponsor, Liberty Fitness, teaching strength through discipline. Until next week, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your dial tuned to 101.3 FM. 101.3 FM, KRNG Fallon, Reno. Fernley Sparks, Nevada, and surrounding. Hit music and more. This is Biggest Little Radio.